Hello, David Clark here from DVC, and in these videos, I'm going to take a look at DaVinci Resolve 12.5, specifically looking at it as an editing program, as opposed to a grading program. It was invented to grading. It's a very good grading program. It gets used in feature films all over the place. So the grading is brilliant. But recently, they've added in a lot of editing features. And the question is, is it good enough to use now? Can you just use it and dump your own program? There are two versions of Resolve. There's a free version and a paid for version. And the free version is actually very capable. You can edit up to UHD resolution. It doesn't watermark it. It's not time limited or anything. It's got lots of features in there. There's even some features inside of it, which you might wish were in your own editing program. And it's free. So why wouldn't you use it? Well, maybe you will. But what we'll do is we'll talk about the good bits and the bad bits as we go through this video. There's also a paid for version. Now the paid for version is about 600 pounds and it adds in editing of higher resolution projects. So the free one does up to UHD, the full one does 4K, the full one's got some HDR things inside of it, the full one does stereoscopic editing. It's also got a couple more filters than the free one. It's got some really nice noise reduction filters, some nice deinterlacing that they've added inside of it. So it's better and there's some extra nice features, but they're not essential. So you might say, no, the free one's good enough for me, I'll do that. Personally, we've got the paid for one and I do like the extra stuff that's inside of it. Right now, what I want to do is just concentrate on what the regular program does. I will primarily be comparing it to Premiere and Edius, which are the two most popular programs with our customers at DVC. I won't be going through absolutely everything because this video would then be hours and hours long. If there's enough demand, we might make our own tutorial series that would be available to buy off the DVC website. This is kind of an introduction to Resolve and comparing it to other programs. This is made in June of 2016 and I'm using Resolve 12.5, which has just come out. Version 12 was the first one to add in some nice editing features and 12.5 has refined them a bit. OK, so let's start talking about Resolve itself. Firstly, you just download it from the Blackmagic website and install it. It does need a fairly good system to run on. Resolve does a lot of work on the graphics card. The graphics card is a very important part of your system. Now, the one I'm making this tutorial on is a laptop, but it's a very good laptop. It's a laptop that uses a desktop Skylake processor and it has an NVIDIA 970 graphics card inside of it. So it's actually a very good graphics card with 4 gig of RAM and a very nice processor. And on top of that, I've got 32 gig RAM inside the computer. Actually, the biggest, most important thing is really the graphics card. You have to have a fairly good graphics card. And actually, if your graphics card isn't up to the job, then you'll find certain bits of the program just plain don't work. Obviously, the easiest way you can find out how your computer performs is to download the software and install it and try it because it's free. So you can install it wherever you feel like. And if you find bits of it don't work, you probably need a better computer. Obviously, that's what we do at DVC. We make computers for editing. We've done quite a few Resolve systems. We help out a lot on the Blackmagic forums. So we know quite a lot about making really good systems for Resolve. What I'm going to do, first of all, is just to give you a quick overview of how you edit in Resolve. I've installed it and if you install it, it'll pop up and ask you to go through a tour and configure stuff for you. Let's assume that's all been done and let's go straight into Resolve. So the first thing you see is a list of existing projects. You can see I've got quite a few on the go here. I've even got folders with several projects inside of them. All I'm going to do is start up a new project. I'm just going to click on the new project button and give it a name. And click create. And that starts off a project for me, which I now open. I can either double click on it or open. Pretty much same as every other program. Then you're into Resolve itself. Now it's split up into four different pages, which you can see along the bottom here. You start off on the media tab, which is where you bring the footage in. You can pop to other tabs and come back to the media tab. So you don't have to bring everything in in advance, just like every other program. After you've brought your footage in, you go to the edit tab. The edit tab is where you do the editing. What a surprise. So you've got all your media that you've brought in up here and you whack it onto the timeline or in the clip window. Inside the edit window, you can do things like add titles, you can change the size of clips and you can add transitions, but you don't add effects. So typically color correction, blurs, sharpening, that sort of stuff. That's all done in the color page. So in the edit page, you lay out the edit and then you pop to the color page and this is where you put on the effects. 
up here started life as a grading program so this section is all about color and there's loads and loads of things you can do with color but nowadays you also do effects here so you do have a bunch of effects like blurs and film grains and stuff like that which you can put onto clips you can add in others by buying extra plugins that's all done through the color page finally you go to the deliver page which is where you make the final movie there are quite a few options here you can see you've got some presets along the top so there are things for round trips to Premiere, round trips to Final Cut, round trips to Avid, which is where you know, you'd know you be editing in Avid, send the edit to here, do the grading, then send it back to Avid. That's what all those are about. And you do have some settings up here for things like YouTube. Again, we'll go through that later on. But that's how it works, basically. Bring stuff in, edit it, do some effects, export it, or deliver it, as they call it. If whilst you're editing you say, oh, I could really do with an image from somewhere, you just pop back to the media tab, import it, and then it's available for you in the edit tab. The interface itself is pretty similar to most programs. So like in the editing page, you have a source and a program window. You have a timeline where you lay stuff out and you have a media pool with basically a project window as you would have in Premiere or Edius and you can do things like add in bins and reorganize clips and do all the stuff you would expect you could do in a normal editing program. One difference is all this stuff is fixed. I mean you can make things a bit bigger or smaller so for example I'm making the project window a bit smaller there but I can't pick it up and move it somewhere else. If I have two monitors you can come up to this workspace heading there and then go to layout, dual screen and then on and that will spread Resolve out over two screens. Something that I can't really show you very well on the tutorial of course because I can only record one screen. But if you do that you can spread it out over two screens. If you have it over two screens you do have this other option of spreading the timeline out full screen on one and shoving everything on the other. But kind of that's it. You don't have an option, for example, of having your video playback full screen on one monitor whilst you've got everything else on the other one. You can't pick up some of these windows and move that window over to the other window if you want to. You're kind of stuck. It's a bit limiting in Edius and Premiere and Avid and everything else. I'm used to doing what I like and moving things where I like. I did used to have one program that was very like this, which was Avid Liquid, and that always let you just have a set of pre-made layouts where you could make things slightly bigger or smaller, but that's it. And to be honest, I used Avid Liquid a lot, and I got used to it. I didn't find it a major limitation, and I'm finding it pretty much the same with Resolve. Most of the time, I don't find it to be a real pain in the neck. People have said I would really love the option to be able to have a couple of computer screens on there and just have a full screen playback on one whilst the interface is on the other, which you can do with Premiere and Avid and Edius. And Resolve doesn't do that. Specifically, one of the reasons it doesn't do that is it's made by Blackmagic and they want you to buy Blackmagic hardware. If you want to get a picture out of this and whack it up on a TV, you need some extra hardware. And it works with Blackmagic hardware. It's owned by Blackmagic. It only works with their hardware. Their hardware is some of the cheapest around, so it's not exactly expensive to get a reasonable output card for it. But that's the only way you're going to get it coming up full screen on a TV whilst you're editing or whilst you're grading is to buy a Blackmagic card. And that doesn't seem unreasonable. They're giving you the program free. One of the reasons they're doing it free is you have to buy their hardware to be able to see it properly on an external screen. Inside individual windows like this, you can turn bits of it off. So for example, here you can see I've got the media pool, which is basically the project window. And I've got a thing called the edit index. And I've got headings up here for these things. So if I click on that, it turns off the media pool. If I click on that, it turns off the edit index. Click on it, it brings it back up again. You also have this button here, which you see sometimes on some panels. At the moment, the media pool is filling up the entire side of the screen. But if I click on that, it goes to the top half of the screen and I get a bigger timeline. If I go to the color tab, you have a bit in the middle, which is where you can see individual shots. If we have something in the timeline, that'll make more sense. But you can turn stuff like that off. You can turn the timeline off. You can bring up a thing called the gallery. Lots of different ways of sort of turning bits on and off, but you can't say take that window and put it over onto another screen if you want to. So a bit limiting, but I can work within its limitations. So that's the basics. Basically, bring stuff in, do a bit of editing, bit of color correction and effects, and then export it.